All right, so in today's episode, I'm gonna show you guys how to install that. Oh, wait. That. Let's get to it. All right, guys, so before I go under the car and show you how to install this, this is the sandwich plate that I'm using. This is just one off eBay that I found. I really like the idea of the, the angled port and also the straight um, parallel port. So what I've done here, as you can see, I've tapped an eighth inch NPT thread into one of these. I might even end up doing it to the other one, depend on how many sensors and things I want to run in here. Um, that is mainly for pre-oiling the engine, which you'll see in a later video. I'm gonna make up an awesome little engine pre-oiler because this motor's never been started before. But you can also run like temperature or pressure sensor gauges, which I'll also end up probably running definitely a pressure sensor gauge um, and potentially also a temperature as well. So that is that. It's actually a pretty nice bit of kit. It is a thermostatic one. So you can see that there's a thermostat in there. So that spring opens up and then it comes out this port here, or this port here. Anyway, this side. Um, so yeah, and a couple of things I'll touch on before we go too far. This style doesn't screw on, this one has a little piece that comes through it. So that pretty much, that suits the uh, Subi M20 oil filter thing. So that pretty much just sits straight through there yeah, like so, then you screw that on and that sandwiches it on, hence being called a sandwich plate. Another thing to keep in mind is it comes, and I'm pretty sure all of them actually come with rubber O-rings. Rubber is really not good, especially for uh, synthetic oils. They make them really hard, so you pretty much only get one use out of this. So, so if you have some time before you're installing this, shop around, um, get the right cord thickness. So that's uh, the, the thickness of the O-ring and the right diameter and get yourself a Viton one. So this one, I've, I've got a whole set for my, my ute. This one's slightly small, but it will work. So I'm just gonna put a bit of oil on that and then we'll go install this in the car. All right, got So it is installed on the car. Hopefully you can see. It's kind of hard to miss all the stuff in the way. If you haven't seen this already, it's my custom made equal length um, steam pipe manifold on my EJ25. So you've seen here I've put the fittings on to mock up. But basically that's it under the car. So it'll probably be different for you guys. Most of you will still have the factory um, Subaru oil cooler little sandwich plate already on there. Um, so that will space your whole assembly down lower. But for those high performance guys you probably already know how to do this anyway, but most of you will have gotten rid of that and be running a proper dedicated oil cooler. So now that's on, it's time to mock up some hoses and mount the cooler. So I've just finished making up the highly technical mount for my oil cooler. As you can see, that's where it's gonna sit in the grill. Um, this is my SF Forester for anyone who doesn't know. Almost finished building up the full built Cosworth, Deshell built, EJ257 and crazy fuel system, LS2 coils, all that kind of shit. So check out my other videos if you haven't seen them already. Um, back to this anyway. So you can see I've got this angle bracket here, which is using two factory bolt holes on this bonnet latch support. Hopefully that'll be enough. Times is a pretty tight. Um, this is actually a pretty deep cooler, so it actually goes down and um, probably ends up about there on the front mount. So some of the air will be going through the front mount. Some will be going through the grill. I'm trying to see how deep that is. So I think it's about 300 mil from memory. And there you go, you can see that's it out of the car before I take this apart and spray it. So it's got a fair bit of surface area to cool the oil. Unfortunately, it's such a tight fit, I've kind of scratched it up. But nothing a bit of black paint can't fix. All right guys, so it's a new day. The paint has dried, it's all bolted up, as you can see. So it's all mounted. It kind of looks pretty, you can definitely see it, that's for sure. So 
As you can see, as I stated before, I went through that existing hole for this hood closer support. And there was an extra hole here for the horn. I've just spaced it out with a M10 nut, which was a perfect width. Um, and also, where it comes very close to this, I guess, front bar support here, I've gotten some silicon hose. Let me move out of the way. There we go. Got some silicon hose, um, split it in half down one, one of the walls and then clipped it around this metal channel here. So that should stop, well it does stop the um, oil cooler flopping around against the, the raw steel edge there. So the only thing left to do now is we'll route these uh, lines. I think those are the two fittings I'm gonna use. That's what I've got, I don't feel like buying any more so we'll make it work. All right guys, so off camera, I've just made up one of the hoses. So what I'm using here is actually 200 series hose. So for those of you who don't know, 200 series is the PTFE or Teflon inner core with the stainless braid. Um, you can also use the 100 series for oil. I've done that on my other car with no dramas. Just make sure you use proper cutter style fittings from like a good supply like Aeroflow, Speedflow, Earls, you know, any other big names like that. I've gone with the 200 series this time just to see how it goes. I do like the 200 series because I think it um, what resists a lot more heat than the rubber does. Um, so yeah, these fittings work a little bit different. I've done a, I've actually done a video series on assembling these and 100 series fittings. So I'll put a link to that up in the top right corner for you guys if you're interested. Um, but anyway, in this video, I'll give you a quick run through on how they work. I won't go full into detail. So there's one made up. You can see I've got my fire sleeve here, which will push up over the fitting uh, where it runs past and over the exhaust. And then this section up here where it's seen from the grill, I'll probably actually paint that black so it kind of blends in a little bit. Um, so that's right. I'll chuck that on the car and I'll run you guys through measuring up the next one. And I'll show you guys roughly how they go together. So this is the 200 series style of hose fitting. So these use an olive. Basically goes on the hose first. That goes over the end of the hose between the braid and then that will basically crush the hose and the olive and form the seal. All right, so I always like to cut it with a hacksaw and always before you cut it you want to wrap some electrical tape or some kind of tape around there to retain the braid especially on 200 series uh, so next up you've got to basically feed your sleeve on like that so with the tape unraveled you want to go around with a screwdriver and just make sure all the braid is away from the, the core of the um, hose and you're going to put your olive on like this press it down make sure it's nicely seated all the way, the hose is all the way butted up against that lip. And you simply get your fitting itself. Push it in, and that pushes up over the braid, and then threads on like so. And you just wind that up with the spanner nice and tight, and that's, that's as easy as it is. I personally really like using this stuff because it's pretty easy to put together. You don't uh, spike yourself as much as the 100 series. Um, and I've used it all on my fuel system in there as well, which you can see in another video. All right, guys, so as you can see behind me here, the finished product. Um, this is a bit later than when I originally shot the videos. As you can probably tell, the car is just about ready to be run and driven. Um, so I can say that it all works, it's leak free. Um, I did actually have a really weird leak in one of the hoses and it turned out that the hose was actually punctured internally, I'm guessing from the factory. So I'm glad I picked that up before I had full pressure through them. Um, I actually made up a little basically bench test, um, pressure tester, uh, which I'll chuck some photos on the screen now. Just, you know, like a dash 10 bung at each end with a pressure regulator. Um, and that helped me figure out that the hose was faulty, not say an olive or the, um, the fitting itself. So as you can see, all done, all mounted up, relatively stealthy except for the blue and red obviously. 
Um, and then I'll show you guys what I've done down under here. So, if you can see here, I've got some Dash 10 rubber insulated hose clamps. So they run and go into a nut cert down there. And when they wrap up around the front bar here, you can see there's some rubber insulators on them. Um, and then obviously where it runs over the exhaust, we've got the heat sleeve. It's kind of hard to see. And then, as you can see, I've got my oil pressure sender in there now. And all good. I do need to make up a... Um, uh, let me get my pointer. I do need to make up a heat shield for the oil filter, so I might do that today. But yeah, anyway, it's all done. Um, pretty basic video, but you know, it all helps someone out there. So that's my setup. I was actually gonna run this up in the, the bonnet scoop, I guess, or up above the, the manifold, but I just figured, you know, there's not enough room and I really want some decent airflow going to it. So I went with this setup, but anyway, yeah, stay tuned, follow this build series, check out my other videos if you haven't already, and make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave a like. Thanks, fellas and ladies. So call me an angel.